I'm Dr. Arino Metro from Department of Microbiology School of Science, and uh, I'm pleased to in, uh, I'm pleased to welcome Dr. Uh, Peter Walden, who is the speaker for today's international conference, Biotechnology: A Paradigm Shift in Health and Agriculture. Uh, I would like to ask Dr. Peter Walden to introduce himself. Yeah, I'm Peter Walden. I'm uh, from the Charité Medical School of the universities in Berlin, Free University and Humboldt University. And I'm pleased to be invited speaker <laughs> to this conference at this uh, nice new university. Um, sir, uh, I heard that this is not your first visit to India. Uh, so you can tell about a uh, little bit about your visit to India this time, as well as uh, your uh, uh, your view on Adamas University. Well, this time's a little bit hectic and a short visit, yeah, so I'm rushing in, rushing out. I wished I had more time really to learn more about Adamas University, to see what research programs are ongoing, what um, curricula you have to see whether there are some possibilities for some collaborative works and learn more about the university in its mission in this particular environment in India. Because I think there are a lot of things where university can really contribute to the development of societies, so, so, uh, solution of problems and so on. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, you uh, research is a very interesting uh, area and uh, this is about vaccinology. Uh, we know that vaccine saves lives and uh, sir can you elaborate on your area uh, briefly in layman's terms so that people know about the usefulness of vaccines and your research as well. Yeah well the, my basis is uh, biochemistry and immunology so I'm not a technology person and I'm not a developer. So I like to develop things from some degree of understanding of what is behind it and what these things are meant for. So I basically, in my research, trying to understand how our body copes with challenges like infections or cancer or diseases like allergy and what we can learn from that to develop new therapies or in case of vaccines, preventive measures so that we can live happily in an environment of constant challenges by viruses, bacteria and other microorganisms, uh, but don't get sick. So in that context, the research is focused on identifying the molecular and cellular basis of immune reactions against stress situations and using this knowledge together with technology knowledge about how can you package things, how can you deliver vaccines and other aspects in order to develop new vaccines, new therapeutic approaches against cancer or also therapies against infectious diseases where there are no vaccines yet. Sir, uh, may I ask you what are the main challenges that you face in developing vaccines uh, nowadays? What are the major obstacles? in your opinion? The, the main obstacles um, are still the funding because vaccine is still not really appreciated as one of the most important measures or instruments we have to prevent or to fight diseases. Obstacles are also in the focus of the field. So I think that um, vaccine development has to get more put on sound footing based on immunology because we're talking about immune reactions and we need to understand more from that basis and there are problems of course in subsequent clinical development because of costs because of regulations that um, need to be met and they both fields have to be really matched so stricter regulations that uh, serve the safety of those people who are getting involved in clinical trials also usually involve more money which have to be provided by some kind of funding organization. So challenges along that line. Challenges I think are less on the scientific areas because we have learned quite a lot from 200 years of vaccine campaigns about the very recent knowledge 
that has evolved in immunology, in protein chemistry, in fields that are technologically important, like uh, how to overcome barriers of your body, how to inoculate vaccines without pain, how to make vaccines more stable, that you don't need costly cold chains, and so on. So there are lots of points, knowledge is there, which have been developed by lots of people around the world from different fields. So vaccinology, I think, is, um, has evolved lately, I must say lately, as a field away from empirical science, self-encased, to an area where a lot of different scientific and technological disciplines come together. And I think chances are very good really to come up with very productive solutions for our health challenges in that area. Earlier, we used to think that vaccines would, t t uh, would typically take somewhere around 10 to 15 years. Now, with uh, reverse vaccinology, you start with the sequence of an organism and then you work towards a common antigen and you then uh, go into animal models and then uh, test the safety and eff efficacy in those models yeah, and test. There's a routine, routine kind of development there, which does not necessarily incorporate the most informative aspects. Yeah? Um, you can, of course, go the way you said, um, and you can think you can shortcut it just with the sequence information we have. Um, we have little knowledge so far to deduce directly from the sequence what would be good um, antigen for vaccine. We still need some tests there. Um, we can look into the immune responses of patients that have cured from disease and can learn from that. This happens not too often or not often enough. Um, but the way going from the organism then to vaccine development over several stages, different generations, is a little bit slow, very slow. And um, we can expedit that, definitely. But it needs also no new strategies. Um, you have to do certain tests by standard requirements in animal models. But uh, it should be clear to everyone in the field that an animal is not a human being. Exactly. And there is no model for any disease in animals that is really covering the main aspects. Yeah? Usually these models try to isolate certain genes, certain antigens, certain regulatory paths, but in the body everything works together. Yeah? So this analytical approach really needs a complementation with a synthetic approach. I can tell you a lot of examples where simply animals might fight with the same infectious agent, but they use completely different mechanisms. Leishmania infection is one of those examples. Yeah, that mice, which is the model organism, uses different mechanisms to fight the parasites than human immune system. So you could not really learn from the other. No. And of course, you can think nowadays of uh, generating transgenic mice. That um, you fill up then with genes that would um, uh, mimic more closely what's going on in humans. But this would not speed up things because they first have to generate them. They then have to see how the transgenes work in the mouse context and then see is it still a model for what you want to test, for instance, a vaccine. So in the end, the information will come from tests in humans. So to my understanding, you need to have parameters to monitor the effects in humans very sensitively early on. Because what I've said right now about the, the positive effect vaccine, of course, is also true for negative effects. Yeah? Side effects, toxic effects. Also, if you don't see a toxic effect in an animal model, it doesn't mean that there wouldn't be no toxic effects in humans. Yeah, and we have very recent examples. Yeah, from some gene therapy trials in uh, in France that made headlines shortly, or the infamous Tigonero trial in the UK by a German company. Yeah, where, where the side effects were life-threatening, and um, the people affected, young, healthy volunteers are crippled for life. Yep. I'm finding words. Yep. So thank you for your nice interview. I'm quite happy 
to be at this uh, very nice in, uh, university, actually. Um, I wish this university all the best, it, yeah, also for its staff, for its faculty, and particularly for the students and for the future.